Hi everyone, Kate from Krakoblock is here and welcome to this new video on the topic of dynamic tables functionality which is implemented in Jet Engine plugin. Today we will learn how to create a dynamic WooCommerce products table with multiple columns with the help of Jet Engine. Wait, have you subscribed to our channel yet? Please be sure to do so as we've got some really cool step-by-step -step tutorials either to help you get started with Crocoblog or explore its complex features to the bits. So please don't hesitate to hit that red button and ring the bell right near it. Dynamic Tables Builder is an external module for Jet Engine plugin that allows you to output data from posts, WooCommerce products, users, terms, comments, reviews, and CCT as dynamic tables that are sortable too, by the way. It also gives you the opportunity to query data directly from the SQL database. Today, we will be creating this table. I will guide you through the whole process of building such a dynamic WooCommerce product table from scratch, and also I'll show you how to customize and style it partially in the dashboard and partially in the Elementor page builder. So let's start from the very beginning. Here is our Jet Engine dashboard where we can see default and external modules. Dynamic Tables Builder is an external module, so we need to toggle it on to activate it. OK, here we can either view the knowledge base article about Tables Builder module, open Tables Builder section in the WordPress directly, or close this pop-up. So let's click on Go to Tables Builder. Good. And just in case, here's where you can find it later on. Jet Engine Tables Builder. Here's the place where you can add, edit, and delete your tables. So right now, guys, please pay your attention. Dynamic tables work on the basis of Query Builder. So prior to adding a new table, we need to create a query for it as exactly query determines how and what data should be pulled from the database. So right now, let's proceed to the Query Builder to add a new query. OK, name. Let's make it Products Query. Query Type. We need to choose WC Product Query, which stands for WooCommerce. I'll use a simple query for this example, that is why let's just set the product status as publish, so that it shows only published products, and also let's add pagination to specify the limit of products we'd like to show. I'll make it 6. Good. Let's add the query and go back to the tables builder. Let's click on Add New, give it a name, Products Table, select Products Query from the list. The option to fetch the data does not work with WooCommerce because this plugin stores the data in a completely different way. So guys, just keep it in mind that for the WooCommerce product tables, this step can be skipped. Right now, let's start adding the columns to our table. Click on New Column, give it a name. This is the name that will be displayed in the table heading. I'll start my table with Product Featured Image, so we can name it Picture. In the column content, we have two options to choose from, Raw Value which will display the content just as it is. All you need to do is to select the source and the field accordingly. Or template, which will give you the opportunity to create and use a dynamic listing template for this particular column content. As you can see, there are no listing items created yet, so this is what we need to do right now. Let's proceed to Jet Engine 
listings, click on add new, listing source will stay the same, from post type products, listing name I'll make it product featured image, listing view elementor and click create listing item. Let's start with setting up the preview width. OK, now let's search for a thumbnail widget and drop it onto the canvas. Let's change the size to full and enable add link to thumbnail option. I'll also toggle open a new window option on, save the changes, good. And let's go back to our tables builder. Here we can save the changes we've made already and refresh the page to see our product featured image listing. Good. Let's proceed with the second column. Let's go for the name of the product. Column content. Let's choose raw value, data source, post term user object field, field title under the WooCommerce section. And we don't really need to filter or customize the column output right here, but keep it in mind that you have these options available too. Okay, let's duplicate this column. Change the name to category. Column content and data source will stay the same and let's change the field to categories. Duplicate the column one more time, change the name to tags, select field tags from the list. Good. Repeat the same procedure, change the name to size, change the field to product attribute size. Now let's do the same thing again, change the name to color and field to product attribute color. OK, duplicate this column, change the name to brand and the same thing will go for the field. Change it to the product attribute brand. We already have somewhere around seven columns and let's go for another one. Change the name to availability, change the field to stock status. OK, so let's duplicate it two more times. Change the name to price and the field to price HTML string. And last but not the least, let's add a button to this table. Change the name to purchase, column content, select template. And now let's proceed to Jet Engine listings once again and create a new listing for products purchase. OK, let's change the preview width to 300, search for Add to Cart widget and place it onto the canvas. Go to the Style tab to change the way it looks. So let's start with Typography, Font Family Cabin, Size 16 pixels, Weight 700, Transform Normal, Line height 24 pixels. As for the colors, let's make the background color primary and text color white on normal mode. And on hover, let's make the background dark blue and the text white too. Also, let's adjust the border radius and padding here as well. So I'll make it 16 pixels from the sides and 8 pixels from top and bottom. Good! Looks fine to me. So let's save the changes and go back to the table. And now we can try to click on Reload Preview to see our table. Ok guys, please be sure that this is not how it will look on the front end. 
as we will style it here in the table styles as well as in Elementor a bit later. Okay guys, so right here in the table styles tab you can adjust the width of heading and cell, vertical and horizontal align individually for each column. For example, let's set the width of the first column, picture, to 180 pixels. As for the product name, let's make it 230 pixels. The same will go for the category 2. Ok, tags. Usually, there are multiple tags for each product, so let's set the width of this column to 300 pixels. As for the size, I'll make it 160 pixels. Ok, now color, brand, availability and price all will be 100 pixels wide. And the column with the add to cart button will be 230 pixels. Good! Also guys, please keep in mind that advanced styling options are available in Elementor and Gutenberg editors. So let's click on the update table button and proceed to the pages section to display this newly created table on the front end. Right here I already have a product table page created, so let's open it with Elementor. Search for a dynamic table widget and drop it onto the canvas. In table source, select the products table, the one that we just created. And as you can see, you have a couple of options available right here. You can show the column names in table header or footer and allow horizontal scroll which is really useful for complex tables. And right now, let's proceed to the Style tab to make it look nice and fit the design of our website. Set Table Alignment to Center and proceed to the Headers tab. Let's start with Typography. I'll change the font family to Roboto, Size 14 pixels, Weight 500 and line height 18 pixels. Now the background color will be dark blue and text color white. Let's change the padding here too, so I'll make it 14 pixels from top and bottom. Good. And set the alignment to center. Right now guys, let's customize the body style. Font family, Roboto. Size 16 pixels, weight 400, line height 20. Ok, background color will be white and text color dark blue. I'll adjust the padding here too, so I'll make it 16 pixels from the top, 30 pixels from the right, 0 from the bottom and 30 pixels from the left. Border type Let's set it to solid and set the width to 1 pixel from the top just to give it a slight line divider. And of course, change its color to light gray. And also, I'll set both vertical and horizontal alignment to center. Ok, now it looks much better. And last but not the least, we can add a pagination widget from the Jet Smart Filters plugin right underneath the table just to give our users an opportunity to easily navigate through the products if needed. So let's search for a pagination widget and drop it onto the canvas. Select the source Jet Engine Dynamic Table and adjust control settings to your liking. I'll change the previous and next buttons, set item center offset to 4, and go to the style tab to customize this widget a little bit. So typography pop-ins, size 16 pixels, weight 400, and line height 24 pixels. 
I'll change the padding here to 2 pixels from the top, 10 from the right, 2 from the bottom, and 10 from the left. Set the horizontal gap to 2 and vertical to 0, as well as change the border radius to 4. Now, as for the colors, I'll choose the primary color, blue, for the text on normal. On hover, I'll swap the colors, so the background color will be primary blue and text color will be white. And the same thing will go for the current settings. Background color, primary blue, text color, white. Okay, looks pretty nice, right? So let's save the changes and check out the front end. Okay, so as you can see, here's our dynamic WooCommerce product table with all available info about the product that we've set up on the back end. We can scroll horizontally to see more info, add the products to cart, or open them to select the most convenient options and purchase the product. And of course, we can navigate through the table easily with the help of pagination widget that is working perfectly fine. So guys, that's pretty much it for today. Stay tuned for the coming videos as in one of the next ones we will learn how to add some really cool filters to this table to make it sortable. And just to give you a little teaser, Dynamic Tables Builder is not the only one feature that we've prepared for you. I'll show you how to use the Dynamic Charts Builder to create things like that in our next videos. I'll leave the link to this demo in the description so you could check it out yourself and decide what features you will add to your websites the first. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and informative for you and your projects. If you still have any questions left, go ahead and drop them right in the comments below this video or contact our support team so they could assist you. Also, don't hesitate to share your wonderful ideas with us on our GitHub page and join our friendly Facebook community. Cheers, guys!